Sean, first of all, Brozier and Chimiti, any chance for tomorrow? If not, any chance for the weekend? Brozier certainly to be in and around it. Chimiti's not ready yet. Um, he's, he's training ever so, ever so well and training hard, but he's, he needs an extended games programme um, due to the nature of his injury. But Brozier should be around it. Obviously, you brought better in for Dominic Calvert Lewin at the weekend. We saw Dominic in the Merseyside derby last season, just what a threat he can be in the game that he gave Van Dyke and, and Kanate. Maybe we haven't quite seen that since. Is he playing within himself? If so, what? well, I've, I've spoken to him recently about it, and that, that you know, sort of freeing yourself up a little bit. And uh, I think he's a very good player, as everyone knows. You know, I've stood by him a lot when people have questioned whether he should be playing or not. But I do believe in him. I thought it was right to come out the other day. Um, We'll, we'll reconsider it, of course, going into the next game. But I thought he came on; he looked active. But yeah, I, I don't think it's. Um, I think he's got more to offer. I don't, I don't think he's playing within himself. Not a deliberate thing, but I reminded him of, of the good player he is and what he can be and the threat he can be. And I, I agree. I, I against Liverpool last season, I thought he was excellent. I thought it reminded everyone of the player he is, um, and it's it's shown itself in various times. And finding that consistency of what he does is is important. But he knows that. Is that where the injuries that he's had? Uh, maybe we, we spoke at some length about that and he says he feels good I mean he's getting a lot more minutes under his belt you know that uh, and training minutes as well he's not missed a lot of football um, sorry as in training round yeah, football yeah. Um, so yeah I mean I think he's I think he's coming back to, to get him back to where he wants to be and, and certainly we want him to be because um, we believe he's a very good striker and I suppose the competition for places with Broger and Chimiti coming back then that will yeah, I think that's always helpful. Yeah, it's always helpful. You know, I played many moons ago, and it's always helpful if you have got competition around you. It just keeps you with that edge, you know, because you know that if there's other players there and they're all willing and they're all fighting to play, then you have to stay on top of your performances. Maybe, maybe that would be part of his motivation. Um, who knows? You know, different players are motivated by different things. Some by that, some by the manager, some by just wanting to play, some by wanting to score, all the rest of it. So they're the hardest things to define in an individual. When you're looking at the team as a whole, what reasons do you see for the fragility that we saw against Manchester United? Because we've seen against the likes of Fulham, the likes against uh, against Palace as well, that ability to come from behind and and and, and get points. In there. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I mean, it's. I thought the other day was pretty obvious in the sense of mistakes. You can't. The hardest thing as a manager is is when someone doesn't take the crucial moment to score a goal and someone makes a mistake they're the hardest things to manage you know and, and the other day was just an extreme version of it you know certainly three I think Jared's unlucky with the one that pings into the box he you know, might have got a bigger foot on it a bit unlucky but the three others one's a tactical thing after the half time which is you know a mystery to me why the team did that um, obviously and then the two individual errors so uh, that, that's much more difficult to legislate for um, other times of the season of course we look at reasons for but that one's a lot more difficult Do you see it then as a tough moment at the minute and as such you know we see that the, the owner Farhad Mashiri at the minute has given his support to you has there been a conversation with him has he offered any kind of support no, the, 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 the fact is it's never been an easy ride since I walked in the building everyone knows that I've spoken openly about it you know and I, I mind everyone the fans said they wanted truth I've been nothing but truthful I've never questioned the fans still won't never questioned anything about the club I've tried to keep everything in house and keep it all about what I can tell you and it's been difficult and it still is difficult you know I didn't come into this season you're uh, not you personally the, the media asked after the game you know why we're not doing this season I said the club hasn't been operating in the manner it wants to for the last five seasons you know we're just trying to build we're trying to work we're trying to work with the players and make it stronger than it was we finished really well last season and maybe that was a bit of a misleading one going into this season as if it was going to be an easy season it's not never was going to be you know, and, uh, I'm ready for that. I'm more than ready for the challenge. And it's not because it could be easier, because for sure we've, we've made errors. I've made errors this season, for sure. Um, the team have made errors, that's quite obvious. And we haven't killed teams off when we've been in a position to do so. And the fine margins, you know, uh, are always there for all to see. Um, and I've never never shot away from that. You know, it's, it's a fact of life as a manager. You have to get the margins right, and we haven't done so far this season. But the bigger picture of this club has been... It's been a challenge from the first minute I walked in here, and it still is. And we've done loads of work, not just me, by the way. I'm the one who has a voice because I often am the one who has a voice. Um, but there's so much work been done here. So many good things have been done. But of course, I'm never naive enough to think that makes it all right. You've got to win games. And we haven't won enough games this season. We've got to win more. We've got to correct it. We've got to correct it ASAP. Yeah, expand on that, though. What, what errors do you feel that you've made this season? Well, just whether it be tactical errors, but, you know, picking the right team, you know. Um, 
sometimes you you know you like I said the hardest thing is when a player doesn't take a chance because that's the hardest thing as a manager you can't take it for them and you can't stop a mistake for them but you can limit it with your organisation and maybe the cover them and the player the what ifs as I call it attacking the maybes defending the maybes you know be alive in both boxes that kind of type of thinking um, so yeah the, the areas I've made of really the tactical decision you know can you can you find a different way can you operate a different way I, I did say the other day against you know sometimes and belief of, of others. Michael Duff, I remember him coming into a meeting at Burnley when everyone presumed we just roll out a 442. And we sat there for two hours talking about subs, and he was absolutely gobsmacked. He went, I didn't know that this is what you do. Because he just presupposed we just roll out a 442, we roll out the subs, and that's it. And he was absolutely gobsmacked. So I can assure you, it's a constant work in progress here, constant thought, constantly looking at the stats, the facts, the players, speaking to the players, sharing a view trying to mould it differently you know trying to score more goals for example it's the hardest thing in the game if it was easy everyone would do it and they'd all have amazing strikers we haven't we're all searching for the best or developing or working with a team that can score goals you know that's the difference and it's it's a constant work and it still is and that's been since the day I walked in there I wasn't expecting it to be easy and it's certainly not and it's still not just to clarify has there been a chat with Farhad and has it given any kind of clarification no only the simple I've always had a relationship with him which is very simple whatsapp messages the odd phone call very super simple um, we're still waiting on the new ownership it seems to be the, the general feel I still haven't spoken to anyone it seems to be like it's gathering some kind of pace um, who knows what that will bring we'll have to wait and see because I've had no contact of any depth with them. again I have to ask the question because you say that you haven't spoken to them does that an, an element of frustration would you feel happy if you've been able to have a conversation no uh, the reason uh, I say no is because it's, we all know there's been other groups who have been close and then it's fell away I can only imagine um, I don't know them as operators but I imagine they've gone no no until we're absolutely there then we'll just sit tight you know and I'm sure when they get to the point when they're really ready or nearly ready they will reach out because why wouldn't they they have to get a feel from you know whether I'm their guy or not they have to get a feel for what I've learned in my time at um, this club and others have learned they have to do that well I would imagine that's good business practice yeah again it's up to them but I can totally see why they've just stepped away until it's finally done and then I'm sure they'll be in ASAP and saying right this is where we're going to go with it do you have any transfer plans then well, we, we, we're planning on different scenarios for obvious reasons. Um, there still has to be the financial situation to some degree played into that. So, yeah, Kevin and the team are working hard with us when we, when we can and working with them and viewing players and background on players and the like. And I know we've often spoken about crucial times in the season, but it feels like this could be purely because of the relative positions of the two sides in the table and obviously Wolves can move out of the bottom three and above yourselves as well. So how crucial a, a period well, last, season, could it be? last season as you'll probably remember we were on four points at this stage we're on 11 now so by no means is that where I was expecting to be I was expecting to have more points but you know what happened next so it's a similar but different scenario you know we've got ourselves in a position where we feel we should be doing better I certainly do myself included um, now it's about taking on the next challenge taking on these games going and winning more games getting more points on the board we've done it before it's now time to do it again it seems to go in them cycles and sure I'm still trying to crack the code as others have before me um, you know it's been a bit like that for a while when I look back from the fixtures and the stats and the different ways the team's been operating for a number of seasons as reference points and spoke to a few of the players who've been here a number of seasons but that's where it's at we've got ourselves back to a point where we have to go right must do better and, and, and ASAP and, and that's what I've been speaking about with the players it's, it's my responsibility to make sure we're in the right frame of mind to go and do better what we're looking to do. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Finney. We'll go to Richard. Sean, given what you've just said and context of where you were 12 months ago, um, how great is the challenge to maintain a level headed approach within this group, or do you detect a, a degree of frustration? No, I mean, I've been frustrated um, this season because I think we've done better than what the points show. Um, key moments we haven't taken care of, and that's that's been quite evident. Um, I don't think there's major frustration in the group other than wanting to, you know, the frustration of not winning and, and wanting to play well and wanting to deliver better than we are doing, of course. Um, but no, I think it's um, it's an ongoing challenge here and I think the group are, are pretty honest with it. I think I could I couldn't be more proud of this group. People keep asking, why, you know, what about this? Why? I said, these have come through fire after fire, a lot of this group. There's only a few players join us this summer. The rest have just been through constant. Here's another knock, another knock, another knock. And we're still going and we're still fighting. I certainly am. I believe the team are. 
so fair play, you know, that's part of the, the journey of Everton Football Club. Without these having a right go, we'd be in massive trouble. But we're still having a right go. We're still working for every inch of what we get. We don't always get it right. I don't always get it right. I'm absolutely sure of that. But we've got it right enough. And now we've got to get it right enough again. Do you feel then that you're better equipped to handle this situation I mean, because of experience? Because no, Whether you are or you're not, you know, you've got to handle it. That's the job. I came here absolutely, the goalpost changed radically within a month of getting in it. Of what I, what I was sort of projected as being what the truth of the club was and wasn't. Not in a vicious way. It just turned out that it wasn't. You know, all sorts of things started happening. Last season, you all know, that was a massive shock to me when we got points. I didn't even know that was on the horizon. So when I came in it. So it's constant. It's a constant challenge here. And, and I'm certainly up for it. I think I've shown that and I need to show it again. What do we expect from Wolves then tomorrow night? Because they might be in the bottom three, but they, you talk about being battle-hardened. They seem to scrap it in every game. And from what we've seen at the weekend, there isn't a dull game involved in Wolves this season. Well, yeah, but, but people weren't saying that at the very beginning of the season about them. You know, they've, they've corrected it somewhat more recently until obviously not so good on Saturday. But they've got good players. You know, most players in uh, most teams in the Premier League do have. They've had a tough start, as have we, for different reasons. Different challenges, different reasons. Another big game, another important game, um, a very important game. Everyone keeps telling me every game is very important, and it is. No, it is. I'm not. I'm not laughing about it. I'm genuinely serious. That's another thing I've learned about Everton Football Club. Every game is a must-win. That's the challenge. How do you set up your team without giving any secrets away? Because you look at how Wolves have played this season. There's only really Arsenal that have stopped them from scoring this year. So whilst they might not be getting the results, they certainly know how to put the ball in the net. Well, we're, our defensive record until Sunday was very strong, and um, we know that. Um, I'd like to think we wouldn't make that many individual errors. You never know, but I'd like to think not. Um, and that, that we've corrected the defensive unit from the beginning of the season. Now it's about finding that balance that I speak about endlessly. You know, correct that, well, get back to that solid feel, but also having more awareness in the attacking third to go and open teams up and score more goals. If you can get a positive result here tomorrow night, how does that set you up for what is always an important, busy, festive period, especially when you look at what's down the road? It just sets you up for the next one. No, I've never got carried away with that here. There's no respite. The next one, a win just, just pushes back the noise and makes it feel better. Then we have to keep winning to really push it back. And we've only had a couple of spells when we've done that. It's important to get back to that. You know, pushing the noise, making it, changing the narrative, making it more positive, making it more positive general feel. Working very hard to do that. And it's been hard to keep it once we've got it. That's been the challenge. But the first step's the most important. And the next step for us is to win the next game. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. We'll go to Julia. Just there, you said you know it's been fire after fire for the players. It's been constant challenges for yourself and everyone. Do you feel you and the players are all still together on the same page right now? Yeah, absolutely. That, I don't think that's been questioned. Certainly not in the camp. Um, it always gets questioned outside of the camp when things are going well. Got questioned after the Chelsea game when we responded. That's quite obvious. Got questioned after the points tally. The start hadn't been amazing last season. We've always banded together. We've always pulled together. We've always found our way, and it's important we do that again. It feels like a limbo period at the moment because, as you say, it feels like a takeover may be imminent, but then we've been in this situation before here. For you yourself then, and you're saying there that the current owner communicates by WhatsApp and there is an interim board been in place for most of your tenure, how how much sort of going on inside here? Is it skeleton staff? Is it, does it feel sometimes like it's just you and the players taking all this on that's maybe not necessarily well, that, well, your that's issue? just how it's been. Um, I must make clear, Mr. Mashiri has been fine with me on WhatsApp. There's no drama to it. It just that's his chosen. But he's not at games, is what I'm saying. He's not a well, present I, I owner. I think we know the reason for that. Uh, you know, from when I first came here, but the, the fans didn't want him at games, amongst a number of others. Um, he's actually been supportive of me and my time here. I think he's realistic of the challenge, so no problem with that. And the WhatsApp thing is irrelevant. It's just his manner of, of keeping in touch. So it's no problem to me either. The new owners might, if they come and take the club, they might decide to do that. A lot of people do nowadays. Um, no, the, the challenge of the club hasn't changed at this moment. We don't know what's going to come forward because if the new owners come in, I would imagine they'll have a plan, a strategy, a feel. They probably will make their changes from the hierarchy and where they see it going, I would imagine, equally. We'll have to wait and see. Don't know until I speak to them. 
Um, at the weekend, you brought Nathan Patterson on. I know you've been asked a lot about him and his progress. I've been asked a lot about every player, especially the ones who are not in the team. And then when they get in the team, they go, why are they playing them? And then I go, right. And then the ones out of the team have to come in the team. And it's an ongoing process. OK, then has he done enough to potentially start? He's done enough he, always to just be in mind. Every player here is more or less in mind. We've got some ones who you would argue are probably going to play. But we've got plenty on the periphery and challenge when they're all fit to make sure that challenge is healthy and people are getting fit again now. A lot was made about the, the fans leaving early at Old Trafford at the weekend. I just wondered with the next two games as well, you know, Merseyside Derby coming up, Wolves tomorrow at Goodison, how much do you need the fans behind the team? And do you feel you've still got the fans? The fans have always been um, a big part of this football club. They will be forevermore, I hope, um, with me, beyond me. I really hope that because it's, a, it's that kind of club where the fans are important. Um, I've never questioned them despite what some people have written, as you know, but I've never questioned the fans here, nor will I be doing. Of course it's helpful if they're behind us. If they're not, try and stay behind us as long as you can. Try and help myself and the players. Every time, you know, they get a mention, it's a big part of what they can do. So, well, then stand up then and stay together. That's that's the simplicity of it. I know it's not that easy in real terms because you've got to win games. and that, That's the glue that holds a fan base together is winning games. And if you're not winning, certainly dying for the cause and putting sweat on the shirt and believing in the badge you know that's a big part of it and I certainly do that you know there's no me my staff and the players you know, sometimes we haven't delivered as well as we could do but we work tirelessly I can assure you this is the most work I've done in all my years in management of this football club without a shadow of a doubt 